Hello, I'm Jimmy Banning, your Teen Star host at Cleveland Heights High School. Cleveland Heights will be ushering in a new superintendent. Dr. Lisa Dixon left the district in early March. Dr. Brian Williams took over as interim superintendent. Daria Schneiderman talked with both of them. You know, when you come in communities and you're doing this work, you want people to understand that it's about our kids and about them thriving and about them having experiences. Those are some powerful words from Superintendent Dr. Dixon as she prepares to leave the Cleveland Heights District after being at the helm for five years. She'll be taking the position as the new superintendent in Columbus. But I know I, I'm prepared because of the experience I've had at Cleveland Heights. So if I take, you know, the love I have for Cleveland Heights, the experience I have here, and take it to Columbus, I'm sure I'll be fine. In her absence, Dr. Williams will be taking over as the interim superintendent. It is a tremendous honor to be able to serve in this capacity uh, and give back to a district and a community that has given so much to me. And for that, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Dr. Williams' previous roles in the district have included being the interim principal of Cleveland Heights High School, and he is currently the coordinator of alternative programs at the Delisle Center. When asked about who would be filling in for his role while he was gone, he assured me that the options program won't skip a beat. His name is Mr. Christopher Cook, uh, and he is currently a teacher at the Delisle Center, and he is a founding member uh, of the options program when we started eight years ago. And so he served as a teacher and a coach and a um, summer school principal here in our district. So I know that we're in good hands at the Delisle Center in my absence. The district has done a national search for the new superintendent, getting input from the students, teachers, parents, and the community as a whole. Both Dr. Dixon and Dr. Williams hope that the next superintendent will be connected to the community. My expectations for the next permanent superintendent would be that they will keep student achievement first, that they will visit our buildings, and they will get out and meet the people in this community. The advice that I can offer would simply be uh, to support our students, to listen to our staff, to connect with our parents and community members, and to visit our local shops and restaurants and to fully embrace what the Heights has to offer because it really is a special place. One of the biggest accomplishments Dr. Dixon achieved was to implement a five-year strategic plan. This plan has five laid out goals pertaining to student achievement, financial management within the district, and making education accessible for every type of student. I hope that the district continues to lift the equity work uh, because that's so important that we make sure that all students are achieving, even students who come with some deficits. So what I mean by that is if we have opportunities for student A, expand those opportunities for student B. Dr. Dixon has been instrumental in creating a five-year strategic plan, uh, and it is my intention to carry that forward as we as we finish out the school year. And it has a focus on student outcomes and parent and family engagement, among many other things. As Dr. Dixon prepares to leave, Dr. Williams is looking forward to a smooth transition. I expect to accomplish uh, a singular goal, and that is to ensure that our district doesn't skip a beat, uh, to continue with the business of teaching and learning, and continuing to encourage and support and guide our students and to serve a community uh, that de deserves nothing less than excellence of their school district. Uh, and in essence, that will be indicative that our school district is moving forward. I'm Daria Schneiderman for Teen Talk at Heights. Students have to prepare to enroll in college. At Heights High, the district gives students the opportunity to take the ACT and SAT. The college zone at Heights High School under the leadership of Jacqueline Bloxon is filled with college and test information. Students can come here and get valuable resources to prepare for taking the ACT or SAT. To prepare to take it, number one, you need to register. And since they're given by two different companies, the SAT is given by the College Board. So you would create an account and then register to take it. 
Ms. Blockson says students should take the test because it's beneficial. A good reason to take the ACT, and uh, actually there's several good reasons. One, the colleges use it as a means to place you in your math and your English courses, but they also use it overall as, a, as an acceptance uh, to their college. Colleges use the score for scholarships as well. The testing company provides designated dates for when the tests are given. And they're given on national dates and the dates are different so that uh, you may take a, a SAT one Saturday morning and then the following Saturday you'll take your ACT. Senior Alicia Brooks made sure she was ready for the test. To prepare for the test, I went on Amazon and I ordered some flashcards. Um, and just when I had free time, I would always look those over, you know, um, all the time. And then I checked out a book in the library on both the ACT and the SAT, and they had practice questions. So every time I had free time, I would look at those flashcards and do those practice questions. Ms. Brooks talks about the benefits of scoring real well on the SAT and ACT. You can get a very good scholarship to go to uh, certain colleges. Sometimes if your scores are too low, you don't get into certain colleges, uh, which is kind of disappointing. But if your score is like, pretty high, or um, you can get a really good scholarship in order to go to college. We'll be right back after this message. Hey, have you ever wondered what it's like behind the scenes of a production? Well, the Digital Video Production Career Technical Program at High Time might just be for you. The program is so cool. You learn Adobe Premiere Pro editing software and you do hands-on work with the cameras. You can sign up today at HeightsCareerTech.com. The end of March means spring break, especially for Heights High. Darius started to talk to the students about their plans. Class is in session now, but once March 25th hits, these hallways will be clear because students will be going on spring break. I talked with some students at Heights who were planning their spring break and decided to conduct a non-scientific survey. This is what I found. With around 100 responses, about 55% of students reported that they would be staying at home. Over spring break, I'm going to stay home and finish as many missing assignments as possible. <laughs> For some people, staying at home consists of their regular day-to-day -day routines. Over spring break, I'm going to work. About 20% of students said that they'd be going on vacation during spring break. A little under 10 students said they'd be going to Florida. This is no surprise because based off a survey from Travelocity, the top spring break destination is South Florida. For spring break, I'm going to Florida with my family. Florida is one of those hot places, and so is California. A few students also reported heading over to the West Coast for their vacation spot. I plan on going to California to celebrate my mom's birthday. For other students, their spring break consists of getting in contact with their loved ones. The remaining 20% of students said they'd be going to visit their family and friends. For spring break, I'm, doing, I'm going down to Kent to visit my brother. Cleveland Heights will be one of thousands of schools across the nation going on spring break. As you've heard, students' choices vary. As for my choice, I'll be going to San Francisco. I'm Daria Schneiderman for Teen Talk at Heights. The Grammy Awards gives the opportunity to show the artists hard work. Teen Talk reporter Journey Barnes talked to students about how they feel about the show. The 61st annual Grammy Award was held in Los Angeles on February 10th. The event is held to show off the artists' talents and to reward them for their hard work. The Grammys involve stars walking the red carpet and giving thank you speeches. It's like the first time in, in Grammys history where I actually am who I thought I was for a second. So I like that. That's really nice. Um, I definitely did not think I was winning anything. My brother's here. Students we talk home. with had a lot to say about the Grammys. To all the kids that are watching this that are aspiring to do music. My favorite part about the Grammys is always the red carpet because I like my passion is I'm hair, fashion, and makeup and stuff. So whenever I look at that stuff, I just get really interested. So I love the red carpet. While some students might like seeing artists walk the red carpet, others live for the performance. Ashley McIntosh and Love Gator talks about Cardi B's performance at the Grammy Awards. My favorite part of the Grammys was 
about Cardi B and her outfit. I really like the way she was very unique and her music. And then I like a lot of, you know, uh, Fantasia. She's a big role model. Uh, she impacted me a lot because I like to sing too. So I look at her a lot. So them two were my main focus for real. In 2020, the Grammys will be held in Los Angeles, and let's see who the new stars will be in 2020. I'm Johnny Barnes, and this is Teen Talk. Stay tuned for more Teen Talk at Heights. You ever thought about looking into a career technical program? CTE is a program that offers strong academic educational classes that help prepare you for life after high school. It can help you on the path. In addition to the programs at Cleveland Heights, there are also programs at Bedford Heights, Maple Heights, and Warrensville Heights High School. The great Michael Jordan has been in the league since 2003, but his shoes are still popular among teens. These are the Jordan Retro Infrared Sixes tennis shoes, named for the greatest superstar Michael Jordan that went to university in North Carolina at Chapel Hill during his college days. The Retros came out in the All-Star Weekend. These shoes are a version of the Jordan 6s that came out in 2014. The new Retros are the 2019 version. High High student Keyshawn Jones has a pair of the 6s. My favorite ones is my UNC 6s. Heights High Jr. Bradley Williams is also a fan of the Jordan 6s. The Jordan 6s, I like the Jordan 6s. They one of the top five shoes in my, to me. Cause I like the way they made for real. Since Bradley is a fan of the Jordan tennis shoes, when I talked with him, he was wearing the Jordan 12s. Uh, them game Royal 12s come out in September. Why? Because I like 12s. 12s was always one of my favorite shoes, and I want more 12s. The Immigration Customs Enforcement Agency, also known as ICE, took rapper 21 Savage into custody because he did not have the proper paperwork in the United States. Team Talk reporter Journey Barnes talked with students and got their opinions on the matter. 21 Savage is a famous rapper and dropped a new album in 2018. But he got into some legal trouble when immigration officials said he did not have the proper papers to be in the United States. My thoughts on 21 Savage being detained is um, irritating, I guess say because he's been here for so long. 21 Savage's real name is Shea Ben Abraham Joseph. He has been in the States since he was seven years old. 21 Savage was arrested in the early hours of February 3rd. Immigration detained him for at least a week before he was released. Students I talked with had some opinions about him being detained and his release. I feel like it was not good how 21 Savage was detained, but at the same time, 21 Savage been in the country illegally since 2006. So I feel like there should have been different ways that the ICE could have handled it instead of like uh, arresting him. Take a couple bucks, my heart is so cold, I could put it in my cup. Gang versus the world, me and my dog, it was us. Then you went and wrote a statement and that really messed me up. My thoughts on him being released is exciting i guess because now he can get his paperwork and stuff so that he can stay here a lot of people showed the support for 21 savage including offset cardi b and even jay-z helped him out and got him a lawyer i'm journey barnes 14 talk at heights thanks for joining us at teen talk at heights my name is jimmy bandy have a good day <laughs>